If you think of what's causing climate change, you probably think of burning fossil fuels, like the coal in our power plants or the petrol in our cars. And, well, you're not wrong. But what's on our dinner plates is also creating vast amounts of planet-altering emissions. So how is our food changing our climate? And how can we address the environmental destruction that our diets are causing without it leaving a sour taste in our mouths? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today I want to talk about how what we put on our plates affects our planet. And it really, really does affect our planet. Our food system is responsible for up to a third of all emissions, a fact that's tough to swallow. Apart from plenty more terrible food puns like that, I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff in this video. What we eat, food miles, organic food, food waste. So for those of you with short attention spans, here's the headline. The most important thing to do if you want to make your diet kinder to the planet are eat less red meat and dairy and reduce food waste by buying the food you'll actually eat. But don't just stop watching because... Because I really do have loads more to say, including why you should probably consume some of the food advice you've heard with a big pinch of salt. Oh my god, great, another scruffy head person on the internet telling me what to eat. Nope, that's not what this video is about, although thank you for noticing my hair. This video is not an instruction manual. There are loads of different factors that go into what we eat. Ethics, health, eating disorders, tradition, connection, or even just what's available and what we can afford. But the truth is that our food does affect the environment too. And so I want to share that information with you so that you can factor it in when you're working out what you want to munch. Okay, so let's start with the influencer classic. If you care about the climate, then you've got to be vegan. This is something we hear all the time now, but it's worth noting that that's a huge shift from just a few years ago, when food really wasn't on the table when we are talking about our greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, well then, what's the truth? Well, let's look at an example of two different foods. We can see straight off that their carbon footprint is vastly different. The beef has a 60 times higher carbon footprint than the peas. The emissions of food mainly come from two things. Land use changes, scientists speak for chopping down forests and using up soils, and the emissions on the farm. These emissions cover everything from the emissions from machinery and fertilizers to the methane that cows burp, methane being an especially potent greenhouse gas. And if we look at a lot more examples of food and their emissions, we can see that meat and other animal products generally have the biggest footprints, with beef, lamb, and cheese taking the top spots. Animal products end up on top in big part because growing a bunch of plants to feed to animals that we then eat is just so much less energy and land efficient than just, you know, growing plants to feed ourselves. Plus, some animals, here's looking at you, cows and sheep, belch a whole bunch of planet-heating methane. And these emissions are a big problem. In fact, our current meat and dairy consumption could be enough to take the 1.5 and 2 degree temperature limits off the menu. So does this mean people are right when they say, if you're not vegan, then you're destroying the planet? Peel this lemon. Well, not exactly. All the foods we eat have an impact on the climate, and there's no sharp cutoff where we can say, these foods are fine and these foods are terrible. The thing is, we all eat a mixture of different foods. I personally don't know anyone who just eats beef or just eats peas. By shifting that mixture of what's on our plates so it has more of the foods from lower down the graph and fewer of the ones from the top, that has a positive impact on our emissions. Now, sure, we humans like categories, and veganism is a helpful category and set of rules to follow. The problem is, so many people react to this category by just saying, Oh well, I could never be vegan. And then that's the end of the conversation, and they never get to think about all the ways they 
they could shift their diets to make them more climate friendly. So for example, swapping beef for chicken or going meat free a few days a week. Now, all of that said, there might be other reasons that you, personally, want to avoid certain foods, whether that's taste, animal welfare, or health. And actually, speaking of health, you might notice something if you look at that list again. Right, some of those foods at the top aren't great to eat loads of. A lot of the foods that are especially bad for the planet are also especially bad for us if we eat too much of them. And so perhaps it's not surprising that research indicates that policies that would push people towards climate friendlier foods would be better for our health too. Okay, now I'd really like to move on, but before I do, my YouTuber sixth sense is tingling and I can tell I'm going to get angry comments saying, you're going on about meat, but what about soy? I heard that growing all that soy and tofu and soy milk for soy boys like you was made a driving force behind destroying the rainforest. Well, this is partly true. Growing soy does use huge amounts of land, and there's compelling evidence that this is hurting the world's rainforests. But that's about where the truth stops, because just 7% of soy is used directly for veggie soy-based foods. Most, three quarters, is used to feed the animals that we end up eating. Side note, but as a dedicated oat milk consumer, I generally prefer the term oat child to soy boy. Okay, oat child, what's your beef with beef. I heard there's loads of ways of farming cattle that are actually good for the planet. Now, it definitely is true that not all cows are created equal, and some beef has a much higher carbon footprint than others. For example, beef from dairy cows has a much lower carbon footprint than beef from beef herds, since dairy cows aren't just grown for their meat and grazing cattle can have some environmental benefits too, for example, by restoring lands. But cattle grazing can also cause problems, since these cows need more land, plus grow slower, giving them more time to burp more methane. Long story short, yes, there definitely are better and worse beefs, but whichever you're eating, it's still likely to have a beefier carbon footprint, than plant-based foods. Okay, now I've answered those questions, I'm sure it's going to be all peace and tranquility in the comments section. Not so fast. It was fun while it lasted. I mean, I remember you saying, emissions of food mainly come from land use changes and the emissions on the farm. But aren't we forgetting a major ingredient? Food miles. Well, no, I'm not, because food miles aren't a massive part of the equation. Let's return again to our delicious plates of beef and peas. For both of them, we can see that the emissions that come from getting food from the farm to our plates is a pretty small chunk of the emissions. And while some research has suggested the number could be a chunk bigger, basically all the research agrees that what you eat matters more than where that food came from. Right, so it's not the biggest factor, but it's still a slice of emissions. So surely buying local is still better than not buying local. Well, not necessarily. Let's say you're in a supermarket in Germany and you want to buy some tomatoes, or tomatoes if you're American, or tomaten if you're German. Well, you might be tempted by the locally grown options, and actually buying local is one of the top ways people try to shop ethically. But the thing is, as anyone struggling through the Berlin winter can tell you, Germany does not have a Mediterranean climate. Tomatoes don't actually like to grow here, and so it takes heaps of energy to make them grow here, meaning the local option has a five to 10 times higher carbon footprint. Actually, from a culinary perspective, your best bet is probably just not to buy tomatoes in a German supermarket at all, unless you just want to eat sad tomato flavored water. And actually, speaking of buying stuff, you might notice that this video doesn't have a sponsor message. And actually, I don't even turn monetization on because I don't want the point of videos like this to be selling you stuff that you don't need. 
This was made entirely with the support of my amazing patrons. If you want to join my Patreon team, click over here. But if that's not your cup of tea, liking, commenting, and subscribing are also incredibly tasty ways to help me communicate crucial climate info. So thanks to all the climates out there doing exactly that. Okay, enough about you. Let's get back to talking about food. Surely there are some reasons to buy local. Sure, like supporting the local economy, having a better understanding of where your food came from, and worker rights. And when paired with eating seasonal food, it can have environmental advantages too. Plus, for fresh berries and other perishable foods that have to be flown, eating local can have quite a big impact on carbon footprint. But still, the data really indicates that if we're going to tweak our diets to make them better for the climate, the first thing we should focus on is not where our food comes from, but which kinds of foods we're munching. Yeah, yeah, what not where. But while we're talking about the climate impact of what we eat, it kind of feels like we're skipping over the OG of climate-friendly food. Ah uh, yes, OG organic grub. Exactly. I mean, surely organic food is better for the environment than non-organic. I mean, the whole point of it is to be better for the environment. Well, you're right. For some things. Whether organic food is actually better for the environment than other ways of producing food depends on what metric we're using and even what food we're talking about. It's just nowhere near as clear cut as you might think. But what about all those pesticides and fertilizers leaking and the freaking bees? I mean, don't you want to save the bees? I do want to save the bees and all those things legit matter. But the thing is, it takes more land to grow organic food. And some researchers argue it's better for the environment to farm more intensely on less land, so that we need less farmland overall, so that we can restore more natural lands. And other researchers argue the opposite, that it's better to have farming over a wider area that's better integrated with the natural environment. Basically, the answer is unclear and messy, and that's the thing when it comes to the whole organic food debate. It's often portrayed as a very simple, we need to eat organic, or other people arguing, organic food is just expensive height. Treat. When the reality is that different food systems work better in certain places for certain foods. I'm sure that everybody watching and commenting will appreciate your nuanced take, and nobody is going to be angry about it at all. You're so Oh, right, this is definitely a very chill topic. For more on the pros and cons of organic food, there's a link to an excellent write-up from data scientist Hannah Ritchie below. Actually, lots of links to lots of write-ups from Hannah Ritchie below because they were super useful in researching this video. So thank you, Hannah. Okay, so you keep saying that what we eat is all that matters. Is there nothing else to take into account? Actually, there is whether we do actually eat it. Wait, what? Okay, so I phrased that confusingly. But I'm talking about when we buy food and forget about it and then chuck it out. In other words, food waste. If we waste our food, well, obviously all that energy used growing it, all that methane it burped out, all that land it needed, well, all of that is wasted too. Now, when I talk about food waste, I'm not focusing on those incredible zero waste influences that you've seen. Today, I am going to show you how to turn this banana peel into a delicious candy bar. Although I do have huge respect for them and their culinary concoctions, but the biggest problem of food waste is all the food we buy and then just let go bad until we bin it. And this is a huge problem. Globally, about a third of all food is wasted. That's enough to feed two billion people, way more than the number of people going hungry across the globe. All this waste means a lot of unnecessary emissions. One study found that food waste is responsible for about half of the food system's immense carbon footprint. In wealthier countries, a lot of this food waste happens in the kitchen, but it's also a huge structural problem, with restaurants and shops chucking out lots of food that could have been eaten. And look, a lot of the point of this video is nuance, just how many grey areas there are in the environmental impacts of what we eat. 
but food waste just really isn't nuanced. It wastes money, it drives climate change, it exacerbates food scarcity when millions are going hungry. I mean, let's just waste less food. Okay, so this video has given me a lot to chew over. Can you wrap it up? I would love to. If you want to lower the emissions of your nutritions, buy what you'll actually eat, not more. And think about what you'll eat, especially avoiding red meat and dairy, more than whether it says local or organic on the label. And speaking of labels, be careful with labels for yourself too. If you can be vegan or zero waste, well, that's awesome. But lots of people can't, or let's be real, won't. Remember that perfect is the enemy of the good, and if we can make tweaks to our diet to make them kinder to the planet, then that's awesome, regardless of the label. We need to bear in mind that for lots of people, eating is hard for any one of a million reasons. And so shifting diets isn't just about individual choices, it's also about shifting structures, improving access to affordable foods that are healthy for folks and for the planet that they live on. Also, bear in mind that changing our diets is not the only way we can reduce our personal emissions. And bear in mind that reducing our personal emissions is not the only way we can act on climate change. If you're looking for some other things to get you started, well then, here's five ways you can fight climate change without looking away from this screen. Okay, happy munching. Until next time. Bye. Oh dear. I genuinely just tripped over a tree.